Howdy, homesteaders. I need to get my grass cut. So I planned this triumphant entry of getting on my lawnmower and coming out the door uh, ready to get the grass cut. Or at least that's the way I was going to start this video. But uh, a couple things going on. I tried to start it and the battery is dead. We're going to be close to being dead so I got to take that out and recharge it. In addition to that, uh, last time I was on the mower, I noticed that the tire went flat. So that's what I, I need to get that replaced also. This is the tire that I bought. Yet when you're faced with many obstacles, you don't just give up and say, well, you know, uh, my lawnmower is not uh, running. I can't get it to run because the battery is close to dying. Uh, I have a busted tire. Uh, you know, why even try? Well, you can take that approach if you like, but you're not going to get the grass cut that way. So it's time to hit the tool chest and get my tools so I can get this thing fixed. I always take the positive terminal off first, and I'm using a number 10 to get this off, a metric. This is uh, working on a John Deere. My main reason for getting the positive terminal off first is it effectively breaks the circuit. If you take the negative off first, and you, you know you, the positive is on there and then you touch the positive to any part of the chassis then you've completed the circuit but once you take the positive off and you're doing the same thing with the negative you touch the chassis nothing happens so it's just a little bit of safety it's just slightly safer than doing it the other way Wouldn't you know it, I dropped it.
Damn it! Okay, so I'm kind of limited in space in here right now. Uh, we moved everything out from the house. We just kind of threw everything together in here. I haven't had a chance to organize it yet. But anyway, that's just a, a quick explanation of why everything looks like it's in a little disarray. Uh, you never want to take a battery and put it directly on the concrete. Well, it might not hurt it right off the bat, but if you leave it on concrete, the concrete will draw the charge out of the battery and will kill the cells. So it's not good to store a battery on concrete, and I make it a general practice not to even put it on there. So I'm just putting on this wooden chair, which is completely safe, and then I'm going to go ahead and give it a charge. So, what happened? Well, as you can see that, uh, you know, my clothes changed. <laughs> uh, there was a day that passed from the time that I needed to charge the battery uh, to the time I actually did charge the battery. And the reason why that is, is I do have a uh, battery charger someplace, <laughs> but I don't know where it is. It got lost in the move. Uh, it was a good, it's a good charger, and I'll find it one of these days. It's a, a Genius NoCo charger. It's one of those smart chargers, and uh, it's actually a really good charger. It actually, uh, when you hook it up to a battery, it has a uh, reverse polarity uh, that it does every so often, and what that does is it, it uh, fixes any uh, problems within the cell um, as much as possible uh, by doing that method. So it actually can help your battery to last longer. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I like it. Uh, another thing too is uh, uh, it's really small, really portable, I really like it. Uh, but I can't find it. Right. So what I had to do is I had to go to the store and I had to buy another uh, smart charger. I don't know too much about this one. I got it at the, you know, the big box store. Um, it was very cheap. It didn't cost nearly as much as my Genius charger did. But we're, we're going to see how it turns out. Um, but so far, I did a good job on the tractor. Okay, now the battery is charged. <clears throat> to getting this wheel off is to get this protective 
cap off without destroying it. So I'm going to use my wife's hair dryer. Uh, if you have a heat gun, uh, make sure you don't put it on there as long. You don't want to melt the cap. Uh, this heart, this uh, hair dryer might take a little longer, but it'll still work also. So you just work with what you got to use. But if you use an actual heat gun, realize that that's going to be hotter. So uh, just as necessary. Next, you're going to want to remove what's called an E-clip. And to do that, I'm going to use my portable pry bar, also known as a flathead screwdriver. That came right off. That's an E-clip. I was recording. This E-clip is pretty easy. You just line it up with the groove and you can slide it in. If you need to, you can use a little hammer to try to tap it in there, but generally if you slide it on that groove and push it in real hard, it'll slide into the slot and click in. So now the new tire is on, although I'm a little concerned with how it's wobbling around like that. That doesn't seem right at all. No, your eyes are not playing tricks on you. I put the other tire back on. Uh, this replacement tire is not the right one. It's not going to work. So I'm going to plan B. I'm going to try to make this original tire work. So I put it back on. I'm going to remove this valve stem. Instructions on the putting slime in a tire is right on the right on the product, so it's pretty easy to follow.
<sighs> Looks like I got it back together. I was able to put slime in the old tire, air it up. Hopefully it holds air. It looks like it's holding air so far. Although I did learn that you can't just go to the big box store and just buy a universal tire. It said universal on the package, a universal uh, lawn tractor tire and expect it to just go on there. Now either I'm missing a bushing or something like that, but when it goes on there, it wobbles. So what I'll have to do is find out where I can find a certified John Deere tire replacement. But until then, hopefully this works. And it did work. So I know it's a, it was just a temporary fix and I actually was able to, to mow the grass. Uh, it took a couple days to get it done and very frustrating and kind of learning as I went and I was like, I got, got angry uh, that I'd buy a tire. It said universal and it didn't seem like it was going to work. And I was even going to take it back to the store. Uh, but then I did a little research. I remember I said, well, maybe there's a bushing. I looked it up and there is an inner and outer bushing that can be installed on the new tire that I bought. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and buy those bushings. Uh, the price of the tire that I got and the price of the bushing is still actually cheaper than buying a John Deere certified front tire for this mower. Um, a little bit extra work, a little bit of frustration, uh, but especially when you're dealing with uh, mechanical type things, uh, that's just par for the course. Uh, so the good thing is, is to stay meek, uh, stay controlled under pressure, and keep your eye on the prize and keep working diligently until you get it fixed. Uh, right now it's still got the old tire on it, but once I get the bushings and I install the bushings and I install the tire, uh, everything's going to be fine from that point on. Um, it is holding air right now, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and replace it. So hope this hope you got something from this video. Um, I showed a lot of my failures along with my successes. And uh, hopefully it helps you to kind of reason through problems. You know, you have a problem, you don't just give up, you reason through it, you keep going.